how are we going to compete in the world? How are we going to compete when the, when the Chinese labor is so inexpensive? If we're going to survive, then we have to make things that China is not going to make. If we're going to survive, we have to develop people to such an extent that we can compete with inexpensive labor. Now, how do we do that? Everybody has to be an artisan. Everybody, no matter what you do in your life, I want you to consider being the best in the world doing it. Harada was a junior high school teacher in the worst school in Osaka. Uh, out of 380 middle schools at 7, 8, and, or 7, 8, and 9, of 380 schools, his school was rated the lowest. It was in the poorest neighborhood. I mean, it was slums. It was dope. It was crime. I mean, he was threatened many times in his own life, you know, by the students. And he was a track and field coach. And he wanted to teach them. He wanted them to be superb. He felt that through athletics, if they can take pride in themselves from athletics, they could have a new direction in his life. And he was devoted to it. And he studied all of the great success gurus in the world. Uh, Stephen Covey, and there's many of them out there. And he came up with what we call the Harada Method, which is, to me, a proven way of people being successful. He started to be really rough, started to be really rough on the, on the students. He insisted that they come to, to practice on time. So he insisted that, that they do the work that he's asking them to do. Well, the kids complained, went to the parents. Parents went to the, to the, uh, to the uh, principal. Principal confronted him and said, what are you trying to do with the children? They're getting too nervous with you. And then he said to all of them, he said, look, I want these children to succeed in life. Most of them don't even go to high school. I want them to succeed in life. And I think I can do it. Give me three years. And in three years, if we don't go from the worst to the best, fire me. And they said, okay. Three years later, what do you think happened? No, he didn't get fired. <laughs> His school went from the worst to the best school, the best school athletically. Thirteen of his students won gold medals. That means 13 of his students was the number one student in all of Japan in their discipline, in track and field. And his, his junior high school was number one for five years in a row. And not only did it go up athletically, academically the whole school went up as he taught this method that's called the Harada Method. And the whole idea of self-reliance, I'll give you an example, you know, we were in Japan and very early in the morning we had to catch an airplane, so I didn't have a chance for breakfast. I go to the airport and I looked around and we found a little cafeteria open and I like fruit for breakfast. And uh, so I noticed they were selling an orange and a banana. And I said, could I have a cup of tea and a banana and an orange? And they said, fine. They came and they brought me back the banana but they brought me orange juice. And I don't like orange juice because almost all the time it comes from a can. And I try not to have anything from a can. In fact, I don't eat anything that comes from a box anymore. Oh, yeah, just, just organic cookies I found at Trader Joe's, which is excellent. <laughs> but that's the only thing. Everything else is fresh vegetables or fish or things like that. So I said to the woman, you have oranges over there. Can I buy an orange? And she laughed at me says, no, we don't sell oranges. But the orange is there, but I can't buy the orange. She doesn't have, and she laughs at me because she goes over to her cohort and they're laughing at me. He wanted to buy an orange. But they sold me the, <laughs> but they sold me the banana. You know? But this is the way we are. We're frozen. We go to work with such fear. Right? We have to follow the rules and the regulations instead of being self-independent, self-directed.
favorite, one of my favorite stores in Japan is called Uniglo. And the story is a woman came with a baby in her arms and goes to the manager and said, my baby is sick, can I call a doctor? And the manager says, I have a rule book. And my rule book says I can't give the phone to a customer. The woman leaves really annoyed because this is a great store. She goes next door, gets on a phone, calls the ambulance, and then later on writes a, pres writes a letter to the president of Uniglo. Say, you have such a great store and I couldn't even use your phone. It's crazy. The president was so embarrassed, he called Harada. And he said, Arata, you have to train my employees so they're more self-reliant. They're more self-directed. They can make decisions on their own. Yes, we need rules to run the company, but we have to bend those rules when it's required. So the first thing you have to do is pick a goal. The best one you can think about. Pick a goal. Pick what you'd like to do in life. Now, most people say, I don't know. That's just an excuse. Why do we say, I don't know? What are we afraid of? Failure, Failure of course. If you don't pick something, you can't fail. He has what's called a goal-setting sheet. There's about five or six tools. One's called a goal-setting sheet. And this is what I taught the students. You have to pick a goal. You write it down. Then you have to write down what's your purpose. Why do you want to attain this goal? You know, what value does this have for society? This is a series of marvelous documents that takes you step by step. We analyze our past. What prevented us from being successful in the past? And we look at it in areas of what we call mental skills, physical, and life. So I look at my success in the past, and I look at the problems that I had in the past. And I analyze my failures, and I look at the solutions to the, to the problems that I might anticipate. And we put it all down so I can set up my target and attain my target. So what Harada says in his method, which I really love, is he says, you've got to do the same thing here. You want to be successful in life, how are you going to serve others when you establish a value? You want to serve yourself, and then he wants you to look at yourself both tangible and intangible. So tangible, I'm going to make money. Intangible, I'm going to feel better about myself. And if I do, if I do this right, I'm going to serve the community. Right? So I'm going to, people are going to be happier at work. But Harada has taught 50,000 people because he has a method that works. And, and, and I, as I mentioned, I believe Hito Sakori and Mano Sakori are the two key words that I have discovered in Japan. Everywhere I go, they're talking about being self-directed. And so all I'm saying is that if we look at people with limitations, then they're limited. But if you look at people with the vastness that they're capable of doing, I love this Harada method because everybody could become self-reliant in relationship to serving the company that they're part of.